Chapter 20, Flea Bath. It didn't turn out to be a, as difficult a chore as Ben had imagined. He and Pearl were already soaking wet. While Ben sprayed the Sasquatch with the hose, Pearl squirted it with liquid soap. Then they scrubbed it with wire hair brushes. All sorts of things fell out of its fur. Twigs, moss, rocks, grasshoppers, and some drowned fleas. When it was rinsed clean, Ben and Pearl toweled it dry. The Sasquatch seemed to like the attention. It even admired himself in a mirror when the bath was over. Pearl and Ben put everything away in the supply closet, the bucket and shovel from pooper scooper duty, and all the flea bath equipment. They tossed their wet lab coats into the laundry bin and punched out with their time cards. As they stepped into the lobby, they nearly bumped right into Mr. Tabby. His perfectly creased trousers were wrinkled, and his vest had little holes. His mustache was drooping, and he was pinching something between his fingers. It looked like a tiny insect. This should be the last one, he said, as he dropped it into a jar where it wiggled and buzzed. Then he screwed a lid in place, trapping the creature. Pixies, he grumbled. I hate it when they percolate. Pearl and Ben tried to get a better look at the creature, but Mr. Tabby shoved the jar into his vest pocket. It is three o'clock. Time for you to leave. I understand you broke many rules today, his nose twitched, and it has come to my attention that you did not dispose of the dragon droppings in the correct manner. Pearl, Ben gave Pearl an I told you so look. Therefore, when you return on Friday, your punishment shall be... Ben gritted his teeth. What now? To trim the Sasquatch's nose hairs to a precise quarter-inch length. Pearl giggled. That's going to be totally gross. Why do we have to keep doing things with the Sasquatch? Ben asked. Every creature that comes to us for care is important, Mr. Tabby said. Never forget that. Then he reached into another pocket and pulled out two pieces of paper, each rolled and tied with string. Dr. Wu asked me to give you these certificates of merit for helping with the rain dragon. Ben and Pearl took the rewards. After unbolting and opening the front door, Mr. Tabby looked down the driveway. Mrs. Mulberry was peering through the gate with a pair of binoculars. Victoria was sitting in the red welcome wagon, reading. I expect you'd like to avoid those two, he asked. Yes, Ben and Pearl both said. I will distract them. He stepped out onto the front stoop and waved at Mrs. Mulberry. She let go of her binoculars and waved back. Yoo-hoo, she hollered. Hello there, yoo-hoo. Mr. Tabby began to walk down the driveway, very slowly. Good afternoon, he called. How may I help you? Mrs. Mulberry jumped up and down with excitement. Victoria never looked up from her book. Crouching real low, Ben and Pearl darted into the tall grasses. As Mrs. Mulberry clung to the bars of the gate, hollering, We want to come inside! Ben and Pearl sneaked across the side yard and climbed over the hidden section of fence. When they were safely on the sidewalk, they waved at Mr. Tabby. He stopped walking. You wish to come inside? he asked Mrs. Mulberry. Yes. Do you have a sick worm? No. My dear lady, this is a worm hospital. If you do not possess a sick worm, then I bid you good day. And with that, he turned briskly on his polished heel and hurried into the hospital, where he immediately shut the door and bolted it. Victoria ignored the entire scene, her nose buried in her book. Hey, Mrs. Mulberry called, shaking the gate. Come back. I have unanswered questions. Ben and Pearl snickered. That was the most amazing day yet, Pearl said. They stood behind a clump of trees, safely hidden from view. Can you believe we climbed up a dragon's face? Don't forget about traveling to another dimension, Pearl ad Ben added. I'll never forget any of it. I'll remember every single moment for the rest of my life. 
She pulled a pack of gum from her pocket and handed a piece to Ben. The wrapper was soggy, but the stick was perfectly chewable. I'm wondering, she chewed for a bit. Remember what Mr. Tabby had said about a dangerous person trying to get inside the hospital? Do you think that could be Maximus Steele? I hope not, Ben said. He glanced over at the building. Someone who could trap a rain dragon would probably find it easy to get past five dead bolts, and I hope we never meet him. Pearl took off her slippers and twisted each one, wringing them dry. Then she slid them back onto her feet. Well, if I ever meet him, I'm going to dispose of dragon droppings right on his head. Ben chuckled. He had no doubt she'd do just that. Pearl started across the road, in the lead as usual. But it didn't bother Ben this time. He'd come to realize something. That yin and yang was true. For every girl who sought adventure, there was a boy who was cautious. And that was perfectly okay. Just as they reached the first intersection, Grandpa Abe pulled up and offered to drive Pearl to the dollar store. They both climbed into the back seat. Oy vey, why are you two soaking wet? Grandpa Abe asked. As Ben fastened his seatbelt, a story filled his mind.